They're masking inside of Topaz Studio 2. Topaz Studio 2 has one of the best layer masking uh, systems in the business today. It's really exceptional. It could be a little challenging to use, so I want to demystify it for you, and that's what this tutorial is all about. I am starting out with the first video on luminosity masking, then I'm going to move over to uh, color range masking, then we're going to go to uh, the graduated filter masking, along with spot masking, and then finally we're going to end up with the easiest of all, which is brush masking, and also I'm going to go over all the different adjustment tools inside of uh, layer masking inside of uh, Topaz Studio 2. So without any further ado, let's get started with the first episode on luminosity masking. One of the hardest things to wrap your head around uh, using uh, Topaz Studio 2 in their masking panel is the luminosity mask, which is super super powerful but it's really hard to understand and I want to demystify that uh, for you today. I'm going to show you how to add an effect just to a certain luminosity zone of an image and how to subtract it from a certain uh, luminosity zone of an image. We're going to start out by showing you how to add it. Now I have this image up on the screen here to better help us understand how this works. And it's based on the Anzo Atom zone system, uh, zone zero being black, zone 10 being white, and all these other zones in between. So I'm gonna show you how to add a, a filter effect just to a certain uh, luminosity zone of an image, okay? To do that, what we're gonna do is come up here to add filter. We're gonna come and get the uh, color overlay uh, filter. This is going to help us. We're going to pick a color that we normally don't see in images and that's magenta. So I'm going to click on magenta here and click OK. When I click on the drop down menu, I get this color picker wheel that comes up here. So I'm going to click OK. Now I have magenta. So I'm going to take take this amount and move it the whole way to the right, which is going to give us the full effect here. OK, so now we're going to come up and click on the layer mask icon here, and that opens up the layer mask dialog here. Now, we're, what we need to do here now, remember, the first thing we want to do is apply the effect just to a certain luminosity zone. So what we need to do is and this is a very important first step, right click and click invert because you need to invert the mask and when you do you hide everything and you see you have a black mask here and it hides the effect okay all right so secondly what we need to do is click on luma for luminosity mask and you notice we have this little eyedropper tool that comes up here and it's asking us to select a zone but before we do that we have to change this transparency and this is a very important second step is to take this transparency and move it the whole way up to the right till it says one okay giving us a white mask very important okay and then take the range and take it the whole way to the left which narrows out the range and you'll see in a second how cool this is now for instance if I click on uh, the number nine zone with this little eyedropper tool, see it right there, give it a click and it selects just that number nine zone. If I click on zero, it clicks just the zero zone and that's just applying this color overlay to that particular zone, right? Now if I click on five, it just adds it to the five zone. Okay, so now this is cool. If I take, whoops, let me click on the five zone again. If I come here and take the um, the range tool and move it to the right, watch what happens. This range will broaden out. It'll widen out. Can you see that widening out? Isn't that cool? Or if I move it to the left, I'll narrow it. So we can get really fine-tuned adjustments, which is super, super cool, really. And then we can take this transparency slider. If that effect was too strong, just take this transparency slider and start to move it to the left, and you'll weaken that amount you see that you'll weaken the amount of the filter to you get the whole way down to black and it's not there at all so again if I move it up through the range it'll get it'll get increase more increased it'll increase it'll increase till it gets the full amount of the filter effect okay and again you have this eyedropper tool here so you can come here and click on any of the zones that you want which is super powerful now if you want to uh, you can also that was the eyedropper tool, okay? So you can click on any one of the zones that you want, or else you can take this luminosity slider and slide it through the luminosity zones and see how it moves through the zones when I slide it. Okay, so you can slide through the zones as well. So you can do it any way you want. You can either click on the zone or use a luminosity slider. But I find this, uh, this uh, 
picker tool was really nice for picking out the uh, zone that you want. So that is super powerful. So that's how you add a filter effect to a certain uh, luminosity zone. To really help you to grasp how a luminosity mask works, let's work on a real image now. Now we're going to add the effect to a certain part of the image, and I'll show you how powerful this is. We're going to use that same color overlay filter, and this applies to any filter that you use, but we'll be able to see it really easily with the color overlay filter. So let's click Add Filter. Let's come to um, Color Overlay right here. And let's click the drop down menu. This little color picker tool comes up here. Let's pick magenta again because it's going to be easy to identify. Click OK. Let's take our opacity the whole way up to the right. And now our image goes to solid magenta. And I know that looks really ugly, but don't worry. We're going to come up here to the uh, layer mask icon. And then we're going to come down to the layer mask. Now remember, this is the first step. It's very important. Right click and click invert. Now that goes away, all right? Secondly, click on Luma for luminosity masking. And then we're going to take the transparency slider and move it the whole way to the right. Now, this effect or this step is very important if you want to just add it to a certain part of the image. You need to take the slider and drag it the whole way to the right so you have a white swatch right here, okay? And then I like to start by taking the range and moving it to the left. I mean, you can move it the whole way to the left or somewhere near the edge on the left-hand side. Uh, it's very narrow if you move it the whole way, so let's just move it up a little bit to the right of left a little bit. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we have this eyedropper tool here. So if I want to add the effect to the road, I'll just click on the road here, and it's going to find those luminosity values of that road. And look at the mask. You can see here on the mask the, the tones that is, it is picked, the luminosity zones. Okay. So if I wanted to lessen that amount, I could come to the transparency slider and start to move it to the left. And as I keep moving to the left, I'll eventually take it away completely. So isn't that awesome? So move it to the whole way to the right and we'll add the full effect there. Now I can adjust the range. So if I wanted to widen that range to encompass more of these, these tones, like to broaden it out, I can move the range to the right and it'll pick up more of the dark areas like that. You see that? or I can go the whole way to the right, and then I can move it to the left, and it'll uh, decrease the range. Okay, so you have all that adjustment there, and it's really powerful. Now, say if I wanted just light areas in the sky, I could come up to the light areas of the sky and give that a click, and see it's only adding that effect there. Now, again, I can adjust it by saying, is it too much? I can pull this to the left and start to decrease it. Or if I say that's good, but I want to widen the range out where it picks up more of the light values, I can take the range and start to move it to the right and pick up more. Isn't that powerful? It's such a powerful tool. Now I'm going to show you how to remove a filter effect from a certain luminosity zone of an image. So we're going to come back to add filter. We're going to use that same color overlay filter. We're going to uh, click on the drop down menu on, under color here and again we're going to choose uh, the color picker opens up we're going to choose magenta click OK we're going to take our opacity move it the whole way to the right just like we did before things are a little different when you're removing a filter effect from your image okay so just follow these steps come up to the uh, to the add a, add a mask to this layer icon give it a click remember before I inverted this I'm not going to invert it this time I'm just going to leave it white and that's a, it's a reveal all mask. And then I'm going to click on Luma for luminosity mask. Okay. And let's just take this range control and move it down a little bit, narrow this range a little bit right here. Now we still have this uh, picker tool right here. So now we want to remove uh, the effect from a certain part of the image. So if we click uh, a certain part of the image, like for instance, the nine zone here, it'll remove that from the nine, right? Now watch when I take the range the whole way to the left. I can narrow that range and see it's just picking that block right there of, of that luminosity value. Isn't that really awesome? Or I can widen that range out. So let's go ahead and widen that range out a little bit. Okay, and again, you could pick any one of these zones that you want to remove it from. Or you could take this luminosity slider and slide through the range just like this which is nice too. And again, you have the range control that you can narrow the amount or widen the amount that's getting removed. So that's, that's really awesome. And it's just that simple. And then when you're done, all you need to do is click apply. And this holds true for what I showed you how to add the filter effect in the first portion of the video. When you're done, you have to click apply. And once you've clicked apply, then you could come and use any of these other tools on it, like the adjust tool, 
the brush, spot, and grad tool. And I'm going to be making videos on each one of these tools. So by the time we're done with this little series here, you're going to know everything you need to know about masking in uh, Topaz Studio 2. And it is super powerful. Now I'm going to show you how to remove a filter effect from certain parts of the image using a luminosity mask. So let's come up to add filter and let's go back to the uh, color overlay. Let's go back to a magenta color. Click OK. This time I'm not going to take the opacity the whole way to the right because if I do the image just gets real pink and we can't see anything. So I'm going to pull that back so we can uh, see the image showing through the overlay here. We're going to come up to the same layer mask icon and give it a click. This time I'm not going to invert the mask, meaning it's revealing everything through. And that's why it's a white mask. And you see the full effect over the entire image. Now we're going to use the luminosity masking to uh, remove it from certain parts of the image. So let's click on Luma here. I'm not going to do anything with the transparency. I'm going to leave it on black. The luminosity range defaults at 0.50, okay? And the range mass or the range slider is at 0.40 by default. Let's leave it there for now. But say, for instance, I wanted to remove the effect from the sky. And this eyedropper tool is right here. So if I click on a light area of the sky like this, you'll notice I removed that effect from the sky. It's on different portions of the image, parts of the image, but it's not on these lighter areas right here. And look at the mask over here. See the dark area? That's where it's being uh, hidden from, all right? And then we could take this transparency slider. Now think of this as a global slider. If I start to move this to the right, this swatch will start getting gray, uh, lighter gray as it goes across, meaning it's going to add the effect to more parts of the image. So I come the whole way to white, to the right to 1.0, and it's white, and it's added that entire filter back to the image. Okay, so normally you want to default at the left here, but if you just wanted to add a little bit of the effect to the sky up here, you could start to move this transparency slider and just add a little bit in. See how it gets like a, a lighter gray? So just a little bit of that effect's getting added in there, which is kind of nice. Okay, so these are for adjustments, okay? And then the range slider. If I move this range slider to the right, notice it's making more parts of the image darker. All right. If I move it to the left, it's making more parts of the image lighter. Okay. Till it gets, and that's the area I clicked up in there. So that stays black. Okay. So, but the range, I can change this range right here by moving this. Okay. So in other words, we're removing more parts of the effect from the image when I move it to the right and less to the left. And remember, when you get it to an area that you like, just click apply. Now, if I just uh, wanted to remove it from the road here, I could just click down here on a darker uh, tone down here in the road and remove it from the road and it leaves it everywhere else in the image. And again, we can adjust the range slider to encompass more of the image, taking that effect off and move it to the left to let the effect show through more but it's going to protect these darker tones down in there. And that's how it works. I know it's kind of hard to wrap your head around, but watch this video a few times and work with this and you will get it. And remember, when you're done, just click apply. Very important. And then you could come and add any of these other, you know, say for instance, you could use a brush tool and say, you know what, I want to erase this part of the sky. I can use a brush tool or I can use a grad filter too, all in that same mask. So you have those options too. Well, there you have it, luminosity masking inside of uh, Topaz Studio 2. Uh, this is a four-part series. This was the first part, luminosity masking. The next episode will be on color range masking. We'll have that second, and then we're going to move into a spot and graduated filter. And the fourth video will be on brush masking and layer mask adjustments. So stay tuned for all of that. I hope you enjoyed this video today. If you did, please give it a like and share it with your friends. If you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, uh, please subscribe and click the bell notification icon. And then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll be notified about